Hello, my name is Betsy Webb. I'm the superintendent for the Bangor School Department and today I have Principal Paul Butler with me. He is the principal of Bangor High School. We have a couple of data points that we're extremely mm. proud of, of things that we've worked on over a number of years. And they happen to be two data points, what we would call the graduation rate right. and what we would call the dropout rate. Right. And so would you define those sure. as well as share what the baseline data sure. was and where we are now? Well, I, was, uh, I, I came to Bangor High School, this is my fifth year at the high school, and came in at a time when there was a shift in how the State of Maine Department of Education figured and determined and reported those statistics, which essentially are the uh, summative evaluation of the degree to which students successfully met the uh, diploma requirements across Maine. And um, there was a fundamental change that was accepted across the country in terms of how graduation rates would be determined. And it all tied into federal accountability, et cetera. At that time, the, there was a baseline of just over 71% for Bangor High School refigured on the new formula graduation rate. And the most recent uh, graduating class that was measured and reported was about 88% graduation rate. So it's essentially it means the number of students, the students uh, as they enter high school get assigned a graduation cohort, which is calculated as four years from the time they started high school. And uh, the dropout rate is calculated by the number of students who leave high school and who, uh, whose destination after leaving high school before graduation is not known mm -hmm. and in some ways is, is clerical. So in some ways, there's a popular understanding that dropout rate is the number of students who attempted to complete high school but didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, that may or may not be the case. Uh, versus a non-graduate is a student who within that four-year period that they're given to, for, to earn graduation and earn a diploma from a main high school did not do so, and then goes into a fifth or sixth year analysis of the degree uh, percent by school who have an earned diploma in that time. Right. So, when I think that sometimes members of the public don't understand that when we say we went from 71% to 88%, that there still are students who yeah. complete and graduate Bangor High School, they receive a diploma, right. they're just not doing it in a four-year time period. Right. And the, and the information is very forthcoming, although a little bit delayed from the state of Maine on the individual student level and their timeline, if the graduation is not met in four years, their fifth or sixth year or even seventh year timeline for meeting diploma requirements. Right. So we like that because we think every individual student counts and one student not graduating is worth thinking about, worth our effort to improve. But we're happy about the climb. We think 88% stacks up well against other High schools, man, we're really only concerned about Bangor High School, and the growth has been good, and that's even in consideration of our, what I would flat out say, our, our higher graduation standards, more math credits, more expectations for a deep level of study in ELA, and three credits in science. So the 22 credit requirement is significant, and it much higher than many other high schools for students who transfer into us late. Right. The state requirement at this point is 16 credits, right. and in fact, credits are no longer in the state statute, right. but previously had been 16 credits, while Bangor High School required 22. That's right. And so if we have a student moving in from another high school that only had required 16, right. they come in as a junior, and right. we have a, a requirement of 22 credits, right we know right away that they're going to need more time. Right, and that's, um, that's all part of the, the, you know, the registration process. The student comes in, no matter where they are, ninth grade through 12th grade, come in and we look at their transcript and the counselor analyzes it and looks at relative to what our graduation requirements are. And there's a determination of courses not only for that year, but the degree to which the student is near graduation relative to their cohort. Mm -hmm. And we do have circumstances where students come in late in their high school careers Deficient in credit, not only because of a reduced requirement in the high school they're coming from, but for other circumstances. They've struggled in school. Mm -hmm. They have other at-risk factors that have made school less of a priority or 
whatever circumstances, we take them all in and we just make a reasonable plan that gets them toward graduation meaningfully. Right. So. And so many of our students would, out of the 12% that didn't graduate within four years, right. There's still many of that 12% that will graduate in a fifth year or right. a sixth year or even a seventh year. Right. How long is someone able to go to the high school? Well, a uh, student can't start a year of high school being the age of 20. Mm -hmm. A student can start a year at the age of 19, turn 20 during the school year, and have that school year as, a, as part of their public education. Right. Um, we do have a number of students who do all come up back for fifth year, mm -hmm. but there are all kinds of things in the interim that we give them opportunity to pursue that grant them on-time diploma. Mm -hmm. A lot, many of them in partnership with adult ed. We have summer school, we have vacation school, we have all kinds of things that we've, um, that are really responsive to student needs, mm -hmm. but are uh, hold, reasonably holding our academic expectations while giving students another, uh, another opportunity to demonstrate them with a little more effort, which is fair to ask, but in the end it's all centered on them earning the diploma. Right. And I think once the nation um, agreed to redefine the graduation rate, there were things like the GED right. or an adult ed diploma that no longer counted as graduation. Right, and there are families that still pursue those things. The high set is the is the newer version of the popular known GED, um, and families, if they call and ultimately those conversations come to me, I just have the honest conversation with them. I'm not discounting any other non high school pathway. But the fact is, a high school diploma, and in particular a Bangor High School diploma, means more than those things. So we try to convince them to explore other pathways to still continuing the pursuit of the diploma. But ultimately, some do families do decide that a non-diploma pathway, whether it be high sat or a, a program um, a job corps mm -hmm. or other uh, educational programs. Uh, ultimately aren't diploma granting. They may be meaningful for the student, but the ultimate end result for them is they're not considered a graduate, even though they're pursuing learning that in previous years would have considered them a, a diploma earner. Right, so really it's a, a change in the definition right. that I think many in America are not familiar with. Right. And the intention is good. I mean, right. we know that, that we want students to have a rigorous academic preparation right. because it opens so many doors of opportunity right. and we right. know like when you look at graduation rates for higher ed they use a six-year right. cohort right. we're only using a four-year cohort mm -hmm. but what they have found is that there is a high correlation between high school students completing in four years to then completing within six years right. at mm -hmm. the higher ed level That's right. so it, it really it has great intentions, but I think it's created some miscommunication with the public. They're right. not, you know, that I think that um, we're using old definitions for a newer model, right. and so we need to clarify that. One of the things that we, that I personally do, and then we'll communicate laterally professionally in the high school is we look at every student who hasn't. We have the, made the phrase across the podium. We we have students talk about. We talk with them from their first time at the high school. We want to be with you three years and six months from now, planning to you to walk across the podium. When students don't do it, uh, don't earn the diploma on time, I count every individual case, and we look for patterns, and we try to understand what could have been done differently. I like to say, at the end of the day, we can consistently say as the high school that uh, if students haven't made it, it's not been because there's been uh, an oversight, or a lack of commitment to the student, or uh, some flexibility that wasn't that was reasonable that wasn't allowed. It was all of those things. I think are largely there. And if they're not, we aren't, we confront them honestly from within. Right. But every one of them counts, and we try to keep them engaged as much in pursuit of the high school diploma as we can. Right. And really, some of the issues are transferring in and out, I'm sorry, yeah. um, higher standards. It could be, um, I know we've had some students that have had medical conditions right. in which they've had to be out for a period of time, right. but 
we have really bent over backwards looking at how to accelerate learning within the four years. Right. Anything from Saturday school to vacation right. school to uh, courses even during the day right. for credit and right. what now will be proficiency recovery. Right. Right. And interestingly, we've reduced our summer school significantly. significantly. Well, it's just so that under that whole idea that you're you're better to respond at the moment of weakness right. than you are to wait. Right. So we've tried to prioritize getting to students, being flexible within the day, being flexible within the school day, and uh, defining the school day a little bit differently for some kids. Right. Even so far as lining up adult ed opportunities to our courses, so those can count. Uh, all kinds of creativity and flexibility to make sure students are required to engage because that's what it's about. We, we don't want to excuse the standard. We just want to give more opportunities and flexibly so, so they can pursue graduation. Right. You know, I think our community is well aware of the opportunities for those that are um, academically on a trajectory to higher ed and, right. and they really have performed at high levels. Sometimes I hear community members wonder what are what are the programs that we offer for those that struggle, and yeah. I don't think people are aware right. that there are numerous yeah. types. Yeah, I, I of tried support. to even the conversation. The word I say is, or the phrase we use is, "There's a supported challenge for every student." If your supported challenge is eight APs in your last two years of high school, that's your supported challenge. Right. If your supported challenge is special education, we have this broader program, including physical adult or uh, alternative education it would annex to the high school run through adult ed but allow students as they're able to access the regular school program in addition to the alternative ed program so that they can bridge that gap between so comprehensive special education uh, leveled instruction and we've we've phrased leveled instruction in terms of support right. it's level two support what happens differently for that student whether it be integrated curriculum or team teaching or additional time, you know, all those factors that uh, we all know are meaningful toward moving students toward higher levels of performance. Those uh, are a routine at the high school now. Um, the, not only classroom teachers, but lateral support from counselors and social workers and administrators and the habits of frequent monitoring of student progress that in, in and of themselves are important to supporting students and not letting them too far off academically before it's addressed. Right, I mean, we've put mentors in place. Right. We now have a new guidance instructional period yeah. for freshmen. Yeah, we're excited about that. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot that can be said about the challenges of meeting the proficiency-based diploma. I think we're in a position to do it better than anybody. Mm -hmm. And it's caused us to innovate and to reach more kids. Students need to be in guidance, meet guidance standards now so we've instituted classroom-based guidance in the freshman and sophomore year. Mm -hmm. That's well done. It consider, considers uh, the, the social emotional domain, the academic domain, the career domain, over a couple of years that's integrated with the personal learning plans in a way we want kids to think and vision the future with insight into themselves, but with the constant thread being the academic program and what your academic or your post-secondary opportunities are gonna be academic career, work, and otherwise. Right, and then it was certainly we have the Bridge Year yeah. and the United Technology Center right. for that VOC strand, right. which more and more students are taking advantage of. Yeah, we're, wonderful. yeah for, we're for many years now, not only just by the nature of being the biggest high school in the region, we have the highest number of students at the vocational program. Mm -hmm. Among that is a strong group of Bridge program, which gives them the opportunity for, for college credit while in high school. The courses now, the interesting thing about Bridge is the courses that uh, are, are taken during the half day that juniors and seniors spend at high school are also credit pairing. Right. So it's a good value and it's all uh, tied into that idea that you've got a purposeful plan, not only for high school, but the time you'll spend immediately after high school in your adult life. And I think, you know, you often share phrases and one of the phrases we say is we do whatever it takes. Yeah. And that's our mission, is to help students walk across that podium. Yeah, and we, we, you know, we want kids, and this is kind of the way we have the conversation with kids. Students that are vulnerable for graduation will say, say to ourselves as staff, bend, don't break. We want to be flexible, but we don't want to give up our standard. Right. 
it comes out to kids is we want you to show that you've got some skin in the game. Right. If we, you might have to say goodbye to this unique opportunity and try another one because we're not going to relax our standard. We expect that much. We care that much about you that we're not going to let you go out with a lesser standard. Right. So those right. things are important. That's great. Anything else you'd like to share with the community or family members about these data points? Uh, the, the, we're, we're proud of the, the growth. Again, one right. student not making is enough, but we know who they are. Right. And uh, uh, internally, we make it important. And it's not, it's, it's not an end of the line analysis. I'm not surprised by those names, not because of who they are, but some of the challenging circumstances that they might have entered high school in or that they might have accounted in one way. The numbers tell one story, but the story behind the numbers is the real one. Right. And we're proud of the numbers, the way they speak, but we hope they get even higher. Right, absolutely. Well, certainly a huge congratulations to you and the high school staff. I know the amount of effort and time that goes into supporting each and every student. Yeah, I would put our staff up against anybody. Anyone, I would agree. Exceptionally committed. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Thank you.